ERIE's program for uh, rice and human health is a direct out outgrowth of ERIE's new strategic plan. And in this, ERIE made a, a commitment to human health and, and nutrition for rice consumers. This is not a new effort, though, to er for ERIE. For a number of years, we've worked on areas of increasing the iron content and zinc content of rice, and also increasing the pro-vitamin A content of rice. These are to, to address the, the, some of the three largest micronutrient deficiencies that we find afflicting billions of people around the world. And this is also true of rice consumers. So Erie now has organized this work together and it's logical that it's organized together because many times we will be combining a high iron rice with a, and a high zinc rice and a high beta carotene rice to solve the, the problems of iron deficiency, zinc deficiency and vitamin A deficiency. We put this iron storage protein gene now into, into rice and here we have both IR64 which is the world's largest single variety but also a variety that we now know is very high in zinc. So we're, we're doing, we've got a combination here of a very popular farmer variety that will be high in iron combined with, it, with a, another variety that is both high zinc and high iron. After the, the colon it is, it is described as overcoming the consequences of poverty. The micronutrient deficiencies that we refer to, and the, again, micronutrient deficiencies affect half the world's population at least, are actually consequences of poverty, access, a result of poor access to a diverse diet, inability to purchase the, the, the required foods, inability to source them reliably throughout the year. So we are dealing with a dire human necessity. This is an, a need and a problem that unfortunately for many countries has not been solved by the best efforts of other programs. So it's one thing to advocate a diverse diet and that's great for people who can afford to do the shopping and can get the food. But that's not an option for many of the people we, we want to serve. Particular advanced plants here are actually uh, go, the golden rice uh, trait introduced into BR29, which is one of the most important varieties, maybe even the most important variety for Bangladesh. And this is a project where the breeding of the golden rice trait from the original materials was carried out here at Erie with Bangladeshi scholars who have spent a number of years here working with us. And eventually, in a, sometime in the near future, uh, these materials will go back to Bangladesh to move the project for Bangladesh completely back there. On this side, uh, we have the, 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 be the, the beds with this, which the seeds of the, the most advanced part of the Golden Rice Project have been planted. And in three weeks, the seedlings from here will be transplanted to another location here on campus where we'll conduct the first outdoor field trial of golden rice in Asia in, in varieties adapted to Asia. And so we know what, we, what to do with the plant, but what's so exciting is that we've, we've now joined a much larger community of researchers, which we would probably never have come across in any other aspect of, of rice research. We now work with nutritionists, we work with food scientists, we work with socioeconomists, we look, work with public health experts, we work with the medical community, we work with, with people who, who have already committed years of their lives to try and address these issues of iron deficiency, zinc deficiency, and vitamin A deficiency. And we are delighted to see that they welcome our efforts as, as being complementary to their efforts that they've already committed their lives to. And it's, it is so, such an energy for us to work with such, such brilliant communities of other, in other re science domains with a common goal of helping reduce the burdens of micronutrient deficiency uh, throughout the world.